Hello, it's Scott Manley here, launching the Kerbal X with the help of a mechanical jab for science. Yes, we're going to show you some uh, astrodynamics here. We're going to make full use of the uh, energy contained in the Kerbin system to demonstrate how you can, in fact, save fuel if you're rather smart. Now, we haven't, don't need to watch the whole launch, but point is we put this into a 100 kilometer uh, orbit and using mechanical jet we can say transfer to another planet and it tells us that this maneuver is going to take uh, almost two kilometers per second right and that will actually leave us with about 300 meters per second of delta v once we arrive at Joule, which isn't very much especially considering that we want our pilots to come back someday uh i am not necessarily going to deal with that but if we redo things and we instead of plotting a course for Joule, we plot a course for Eve, well then a whole new gateway of possibilities is opened up. And so I'm just tweaking the orbit here using the maneuver node editor. And this is a really useful tool that literally lets me plug numbers in and increment values very carefully. This is a very inefficient way of essentially searching a solution space to find the encounters that I need. So the first thing I want to do is get myself onto a close encounter with Eve. And there, we've got one. It's going to take 1.14 kilometers per second, right? So that's about nine, uh, 800 meters per second less fuel that it takes to get to Eve. The beauty of this, however, is once you've got to Eve, you have the potential to get anywhere, right? You know, once you're out that way, you can use a gravity assist off of Eve to kick yourself back and forth between planets and eventually get out to your destination. The trick is actually performing those gravity assists and getting them all lined up one after the other to uh, minimize the time. You can actually take a really long time if you want. The, the game doesn't give us all the tools we need to do this well, but it actually gives us enough to do some maneuvers rather uh, excellently. So I'm setting up the, up the maneuver nodes, and I'm going to let Mechanical Jeb actually fire them for me, because um, I'm mostly interested in demonstrating the, the maneuvers I'm plotting here. So first thing, we're going to get beyond the Kerbin system, and then I'm going to save... And the reason for this restart is I need to go into the settings.config and edit a conic patch limit to be something like 5 or higher so that we see more uh, SOI transitions. Anyway, next thing I'm going to do is drop a maneuver node partway between me and Eve so that I can adjust my trajectory. And the idea is that you want to fly past the planet and pick up energy. That's the whole point of a gravity assist. Now, that is actually really, really easy to do. Uh... It's very easy to come away from a planet with more energy than you went in. The trick is getting your outgoing orbit to arrive near another planet subsequently, right? And although you've got the tools for getting the, the first encounter, the second encounter sometimes works, sometimes doesn't work because uh, the, of the way the game decides to calculate close approach vector or close approach positions. So if you don't have close approach positions, it becomes very hard to optimize for it. So what I'm going to try and do is get a kick off of Eve and then come back and encounter Kerbin. So I set Kerbin as my target. And what I'm doing is I'm moving the I'm moving it in such a way that the descending or the nodes uh, arrive near Kerbin, the orbit of Kerbin. And then you see I'm getting close approaches, so I'm now tweaking these back and forth, the idea being that I want to arrive there at exactly the same time. So I'm bringing these very close, it's just a bit of work. Can you see I actually have more energy, that orbit is going higher uh, than it was, and there I get it! Okay, so that is my first step, so I'm basically going to bounce off of EVE after this course correction, and then fly past Kerbin. So we uh, again we were cool with this. So we basically say execute next node and let the autopilot actually fly to the node, which I've set up by hand. Uh, it will then go there, perform the maneuver, and I won't have to worry about messing things up too much. You can see the maneuver itself is taking about forty meters per second. So. This isn't completely free because you need to make these course corrections. If you're really good, obviously, if you can plan this thing out in advance, you can make these maneuvers you know, tiny, you know, a few feet per second at most in some cases. It's all really about hitting the windows, hitting the keyholes on those encounters exactly so that you come away with exactly the right orbit. And it's, 
important that you make the correction early on. So now, uh, you barely saw E there, but I did actually fly past it. I didn't fly past it particularly close. There it is there, you see it next to the sun. Uh, for some reason, I neglected to really uh, get a nice good look at Eve as I flew past it, and you know that was the best you saw. Hello, Eve. Bye, Eve. If only Eve Online was that easy. No, Eve Online just keeps me, keeps me held, holds me down, and says you shall not leave because you love this game too much. So yes, uh, of course I do time acceleration, get myself onto a, out of the sphere of influence. Now. I need to do the same thing again. I need to come up with a course correction that will maximize my outgoing energy from the planet Kerbin and then potentially take me on to encounter another planet. Now, the problem is, in this case, I can't go back to, or I could go back to Eve, but the game is not going to draw me the encounters anymore. And, and it's all to do with where it projects the orbit forward from. But if you're going from an inner planet to an outer planet like I did... Um, if you you know you're more is more likely to be able to see the the close approach nodes. Uh, in this case, it would be an encounter followed by another Eve encounter, and that was much harder to set up. And I actually ended up giving up and deciding instead that I could perhaps go and look at uh, Duna. And while Duna has lower mass, it, it is there, and I could use it. So I, I've got an encounter with Kerbin, and you see, I'm just bringing the bringing my encounter down here very carefully so that I pick up energy. And instead, what I'm going to try and do is put my ascending or my node near the near Duna's orbit. And the idea being, at that point, since the node is near there, it doesn't take a huge amount of correction to actually arrive there at the same time. It's much harder to change the, the nodes and move the nodes around. It's easier to change the, the period of the orbit. So, have I got it? Uh, possibly? Oh, yes, we can see that thing just flying out there, right? I could get a long way out. I could almost get out to Drez after two encounters, right? Oh, there, actually, yeah, there, I, that could cross Drez's orbit. Drez, of course, is not the best thing for, um, for a gravity assist because its mass is so low. I mean, it's there, it's nice, you could use it potentially, but I'm not aiming on that. Instead, I'm going to try and find something here that will encounter another planet. And this is just a lot of messing around here. Um, oh yeah, so you see actually I have put the node right on Duna's orbit. So I'm going to go with that. Yeah, You can actually see on the other side there is a close approach, a relatively close approach. But that is going to be nowhere near where the... The, the the planes are not aligned in any way at that point, so it's not going to help me. And a plane change takes a lot more energy, right, than uh, anything else, or a lot more delta v. So there we go. Let the maneuver node, let the maneuver computer thing do its thing. Very short maneuver there. Again, we still have over a kilometer per second of delta v here, and so now I go in and let this thing do its uh, maneuver. And it's going to do its thing. So, yeah, as I said, remember how remember how I pointed out that sometimes you'll get close encounter information, sometimes you won't. And by close approach, I, I don't mean uh, sphere of influence transitions. Oh, look at Curb in there. Flying past, waving hello as we zip off again once more. Yeah, you guys, uh, I hope you're enjoying your trip in that tiny capsule. Um, the problem now really is that to get an encounter, I, I kind of didn't have the right or orbit. So, because I didn't have information on the, the post-encounter orbit, I actually, what I did was I rewound and then retried it, adjusted it by you know 0.5 meters per second. I adjusted this a few different times until I finally figured out that uh, I could actually get myself an encounter with uh, Duna, or get myself another encounter with Kerbin here. So... Watch this. Um, that was me trying. Yeah, you see, it doesn't go anywhere near. It, after that change, it didn't end up anywhere near Duna's orbit. And I wasn't sure that I wanted to waste the energy just yet. Like, it told me what I would need to do, but that was not particularly good. Okay. So, instead, you see, the close approaches only update when you pass through the Peri apps or Apple apps, because it's only really calculating one orbit ahead. Uh, which is 
can be very problematic because you can't actually see multiple orbits ahead. So yeah, what I did was uh, I set myself up, I ran time forwards, and then uh, I reloaded the save game until I figured out that I could get an encounter you know, several orbits ahead. That's really what he had to do. There's no easy way to do it. But I managed to come up with um, a small half meter per second change that would give me another Kerbin encounter. And so I decided to go with that because any encounter is a good encounter. So next, it's a case of just trimming the orbit once again. And I'm actually going to do this here. We want to try and get as much energy as possible out of this uh, tiny thing. And what... What you find here is that you'll frequently come in above or below the planet and that will tend to kick your inclination up. And really you want to keep your inclination low. So it's very important that you make sure that you don't get kicked too high above or below the plane of the ecliptic unless you're trying to do that. Now, that trick was used with the Ulysses probe, which was a solar polar probe. It actually flew out to Jupiter and got a kick vertically over the top of the sun so it could look at the poles of the sun with its special solar cameras. And then it came back and got another kick off of Jupiter and looked at the South Pole. It was, uh, it might have done North Pole, South Pole. I don't know what order it is. It did it. But the point was, if you want to get out of the ecl ecliptic and see the poles of the sun, a gravity assist from Joule is actually a way to do it. So continuing to tweak this here, this is obviously all post-commentary because this whole endeavor took several hours of experimenting and is very, very frustrating. Look, I'm practically, I can actually get out to Joule. You see how, how far out that is? The only problem is the nodes are not actually, the, the ascending and descending node aren't near the orbit. So I adjust it so that my node is near Joule's orbit. Oh, and I actually get a, a moon encounter or something there uh, in the middle of my Kerbin encounter. That's what that red line was since, uh, indicating. I, I guess I could have added it. But what I've done, tried to do is get the maximum distance out towards Joule with a uh, the node near Joule. And at this point, I think I'm just going to use a, a burn at, at periaps or perikey so that I can knock my orbit out beyond that of Joule. Look at that there, you see? It's kind of pretty, isn't it, the way that works? That was the autopilot performing the maneuver node that I had so carefully determined. So now, yeah, I'm just going to set up a, another small inclination change here to adjust things. It didn't quite come up with the orbit that I wanted. So we make another... What what it did was it actually came up with an orbit that was 35 kilometer periaps, uh, which is not good. That would put me inside the atmosphere. If you didn't have, if you didn't have to account for the atmosphere, you could do this a lot faster. <laughs> if you didn't have to account for the lithosphere, you could get a lot closer and get a much bigger boost, huh? <laughs> but yeah, okay. So what we're now going to do is simply fly past the planet Kerbin, and it. Perry key, we're just going to get a straight up boost. We're just going to accelerate. And you see that we've, we're have we down to 1,050 meters per second. So we're doing pretty well. We still have a huge reserve over the direct approach, right? So now we come in. And at this point, we bring up the autopilot. We say it's smart ASS time. And we're just going to do prograde. Make, take maximum use for, of the Oberth effect. We're up at 4.4 kilometers per second now. So that pushes us out beyond uh, Joule's orbit. Unfortunately, again, because we're going out, it's hard to actually get positional information. We do know where, where Joule will be, but we don't know where it will be two orbits from now. So I'm guessing, based on the size of my orbit, where Joule will be. And so we're just going to you know, run out, time accelerate out here, which will take a little bit of time. Unfortunately, there's not much, uh, there are mods that speed this up, but I've not had great success with them. I have noticed, however, it's it's really easy to edit the save file and skip your time forwards. That's a kind of a nice idea. If you have a maneuver node that's like, you know, 3000 days away, you can just add on 3000 days, you know, 3000 days worth of seconds to your uh, save file and it'll fix things for you. Okay, for some reason the close approach is being updated in somewhat real time. Uh, 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 uh. Come on, where's it going to be? Still doing full time acceleration. Ah, there, look. Uh, is it, no, maybe not. Did it leave it? 
Yes, look, so there is there's where I'm gonna be, and there's where the planet's gonna be, right? So I could probably get an encounter out of this. I just need to burn at a perihelion so that I spend more time further out, out there and Jewel has more time to catch up. And there you see, 70 meters per second will get me an encounter with Jewel. I'm prepared to burn that because it will leave me with about uh, 870 meters per second. I mean, i got to do some inclination corrections and stuff, get this thing right on. But point is, that's more than twice the Delta V that I originally had. In fact, it might be enough that with a careful and judicious use of gravity assists, aero braking, and other things, we might be able to land and return to Kerbin. So where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run with this. Uh, you, in theory, you know, if you want, you could actually go for another gravity assist or you could have rewound things. Basically, I spent like 140 meters per second on the burn at perihelion and the burn at peri key around Kerbin. And if you were sufficiently patient and organized, you could replace those burns with more uh, encounters and definitely get up there. But, you know, three encounters in one mission is probably pretty good. And uh, once again, I need to remind people, don't ever use the moon to get into interplanetary space. It may You may think it helps you get to interplanetary space, but once you're there, you can't go anywhere. You need more Delta V. And it turns out that it's better to burn from a low Kerbin orbit and take advantage of the Oberth effect. I still see people doing this. And, you know, they think they're being clever. And, you know, actually, you have to be clever to think of that kind of thing. But if you're even cleverer and you do the mathematics it turns out that it doesn't help you that much but it, you know it, naively it does seem like a good idea and in theory actually you can come up with a, an orbit after a lunar assist which then gives you another gravity assist off the planet Kerbin but you know that requires a serious amount of patience and I did post on the on a couple of places asking if there were any mods to help with this it turns out there are no mods to help with this so you pretty much have to do this whole thing the way I've done it by hand, uh, or at least with, at the worst, you, or at the best, you have Mechanical Jeb and the nice Maneuver Node e editor where you can pump in numbers or type in numbers and, you know, remember what it's done. Okay, so that is us. We have an encounter with the planet Jewel, and we're just going to add a, an extra maneuver here to correct our uh, inclination. That's us there. It's only 15 meters per second. You see how tiny this maneuver is? We're probably going to get out there with about uh, 850 meters per second of delta V. And I might just follow up and do some uh, maneuvers around the, the dual system like this. Uh, or I might just send them off, off into interplanetary space. It depends on how many people actually watch this video. Uh, so yeah, watch this video. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.